Hi, Patrick Fulop here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And in this lesson, I'm going to be sharing my own personal, complete, full body stretching routine to develop flexibility for martial arts training. All right, so we're going to do a quick overview first, and then we're going to go in detail with all the exercises, and you can follow along. I'm going to actually be doing them uh, with you guys and explaining at the same time. Now, if you've watched this, you've clicked on this video, it's because you know that flexibility is important. But uh, as a martial artist, we really want to be able to be strong, have good endurance, have good speed, and good flexibility, because that's going to allow us to maneuver our bodies in uh, sometimes unusual positions, especially on the ground. And if we have that added range of motion, that's really useful to be able to uh, escape positions, execute techniques, and in general, to stay healthy and to be able to maneuver uh, effort effortlessly through the techniques, whether that be for striking, wrestling, and or grappling. So here's a quick overview first, and then we're going to go in detail for each exercise. So starting, I like to start from the top down. So we're going to go uh, with the neck and stretching the neck forward to the side to stretch the traps and the side over here and towards the back on both sides. So we're going to stretch the neck in every direction. We're going to stretch all the muscles surrounding the shoulder. And this is uh, quite a complex joint. So we're going to stretch the pec in every direction. And that's a feature of my stretching routine. I like to work every angle and every little uh, nuance in the muscle fiber so we can stretch in every direction here 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 and uh, over across here so basically you want to maximize the range of motion of every joint so using in this case the shoulder uh, when we finish that on the wall we also want to be able to move the shoulders backwards we're going to show you some variations for that then it's a nice transition since we're already on the wall we're going to use that to stretch our calves so stretching our calves backwards like this and like that we also then want to start with the hamstrings. So we like to do it from the ground in a semi-kneeling position and really emphasizing the pelvic tilt that will create a stretch in the hamstring. And again, we're gonna work the different angles in this technique. Next, we're gonna sit down and have our legs spread apart. We're gonna work on the hip joint flexibility. So just opening the legs and working the different angles when we get to the ground position. And practice pivoting as well to practice flexibility on both sides. We're gonna, with the legs uh, now seated in the legs wide position, practice reaching from side to side, either with the same side arm or the opposite side arm and working on different angles of the body as well. So we can twist our body and really work on the hamstring and the core and the back exercise at the same time. Next, we wanna also be able to stretch throughout the middle. So all angles throughout the middle and then do that same stretch with different variations of the width of the legs. So we can work on our hamstrings, lower back, and eventually upper back as well. Once we do that, we're gonna move on to the butterfly stretch. So holding the legs close to the hips and trying to get our knees down to the ground so that we work the flexibility and the range of motion in the hips. We also want to be able to do it with a kind of a half butterfly stretch where one leg is extended, the other leg is in, and that's gonna hit some different muscles as well uh, for flexibility. Next, when we have done that, I like to revert to a cobra stretch. So we've bent a lot forward, then we're going to bend backwards. So that's going to feel good in the spine. And again, we're going to work the different angles with this stretch. Next, we're going to go to the thigh stretch. So having one leg, so sitting basically on one heel and the other leg out over here, we're going to practice uh, sitting on our heel completely to work the flexibility of the knee first and then leaning back to stretch the thigh. Uh, I like to do at this point is to elevate the knee as well so that we can uh, practice the flexibility of the ankle. And that's going to be useful in, amongst other things, to resist ankle locks or foot locks. Next, we're going to also practice bending on the opposite leg. So bringing our chest to our knee knee and that's going to be good for the um, the glutes in the back of the leg so basically your bum muscles and we're going to practice also different angles from there so going forward and going back and that's going to create a very good stretch in the back so working on the twist of the back is going to feel really good in the muscles in the back and the spine next we're going to practice a specific exercise for guard retention so we move our foot out and bringing our head to our foot in that position and that's really going to be very useful for guard retention developing a tighter guard Guard so that we can bring our feet close to our head and that's going to be help uh, prevent the guard pass and regard as well once our guard has been passed in grappling. We're going to do that from both sides obviously and then we're going to do the same thing from the back so practicing bringing the knees all the way to the chest and even further towards the armpits so that's going to be a nice stretch in the uh, glutes as well so the posterior chain of the legs. Then we're going to do our guard retention exercise as well from the back so bringing our 
foot basically to our ear and we're going to show you how to start slow if uh, you're just beginning. Um, and then once we've done backwards, I like to throw in another little cobra stretch at this point to really uh, arch the back and stretch backwards. And then we're gonna finish with a nice uh, spine twist. And this is a really relaxing exercise. Once I finish my routine, I like to kind of stay lying on the ground and just focus on the breathing, do a little bit of meditation at the same time to really clear the mind. And personally, when I finish this routine, I really sleep like a baby. So the best time to uh, do this uh, stretching routine, uh, personally, I think, is I like to do it after a hot bath in the evening. So uh, nice and relaxed, the body is loose, we're calm, and then we're gonna go into this stretch and that's a good opportunity then to transition right into bed and you will most likely sleep like a baby uh, when you've done, done, done this routine. Uh, the other time that you could do it is after training. So your body is warm from training, uh, you probably have access to mats and then uh, you can do your stretching routine at that point. So whatever works for you, but the important thing is that you stay consistent. Personally, I don't do it that often. I do it about twice, maybe three times a week. But if you could do it more, if you really want to increase your flexibility, you will need to uh, do it more. Personally, I do it for health reasons. I want to increase my flexibility as well, but it just works for me twice to three times a week. I think the bare minimum is to do it once a week. Uh, the whole thing takes about 20 minutes. You could do it a bit faster if you're in a hurry, or you can really take more time and really explore the stretches if you're not uh, pressed for time, and that's gonna be a good, relaxing activity. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so the first joint that we're gonna stretch is the neck, so uh, the neck muscles. So, and that's gonna hit the traps as well on both sides of the neck. So I like to start by bending it forward over here. <sighs> and really remind yourself to breathe every time. And then we're gonna start turning our head a little bit left and right to hit different parts of the neck muscles, as well as taking our head to the side on both sides. So we're gonna kind of tilt to the side here and to the side here and turn as well. So you're really hitting all angles. Not too much pressure with the hands, just enough. You feel a nice stretch in the neck muscles. I like to close my eyes when I'm doing it. I don't know why, I feel it relaxes me more. Next, we're gonna go head to the side here, and here, notice I'm gonna drop my shoulder at the same time as I stretch the head in the opposite direction. So my head is going a little bit forward and a little bit sideways as well, and that's really gonna hit the trap muscle in the back. So we're gonna drop our shoulder and stretch the trap muscle, and again, a little bit of a twist. <sighs> Deep breathing. Try to work the different angles and really drop that shoulder for an added stretch in the trap muscle. And then you go all the way to the side here. So forward to the side like that. And then the other side, the other trap. So pulling the head across, turning, deep breathing, eyes closed. Really focus on the sensation in your trap. Should feel really good. You don't want to go too far and cause pain. And create a nice stretch. And then completely sideways. And then we can move on to the head backwards. We're gonna knuckles underneath the chin. Push the head back. Side, side. That's like that. Different angles here. And that's your neck. Moving on. Now we're gonna do the shoulder, starting with the pec muscle. So the, the chest is a very big uh, muscle and there's different angles to it. So we're gonna try to hit everything. So hand on the wall over here. I like to start slightly higher than the shoulder here. And we're gonna turn our body away from the wall. So that'll create a nice stretch in the pec muscles. At this point, I like to kind of go down on my legs a little bit and back up and twist a little bit inside and out to really hit the different fibers in the muscle. From there, we're gonna walk our fingers down the wall progressively and repeat the process. Still breathing and really hitting all the joints, all the fibers in the pec muscles. And go all the way. Keep on going down. Here, nice stretch. That and you walk your way all the way down <sighs> until so this should stretch the upper pectoral region, and then we're gonna work our way all the way back up. 
here. You can use your tippy toes for a little bit of elevation. And all the way back up here. And I'm gonna drop our shoulder, still turning away from the wall. Different angles, deep breathing, until we get to almost vertical position, so where your head, hand is directly above your shoulder. And again, I'm gonna do a nice stretch over here, here, all the different angles, until you get straight down over here. When we're here, now it stops being the chest muscles a little bit, so it's less the pectoral, and then we transition to the lat muscle here. When you go all the way around here, you can reinforce with the other hand, and then you're pushing your shoulder, so basically pushing your shoulder towards the outside here. So this will be a nice stretch on the lat muscles. And again, I want to work the different angles back and forth. Nice transition from there is to go elbow bent and then push your body against the wall and have a nice stretch. You can reinforce with the other hand as well and try to bring your shoulder to the wall. Again, different angles like so. Next, we're here. The next logical transition is to bring your arm across your body here and this will be a nice stretch behind the shoulder. So like that, you wanna bring your, and really pull with your arm, you could go uh, even almost like wrist deep or even elbow deep, to pull your elbow onto your chest here. You don't wanna turn your whole body this way, you really wanna keep your body straight and pull your elbow across your body because that's gonna stretch the back of the shoulder. And again, I like to work different angles, so up and down, <sighs> still with deep breathing, nice and relaxed. There we go, that feels good. Next, we're gonna go here. So this is a little bit more tricky, but I find it helps a lot. So we're gonna push our shoulder up and forward. So up and forward, here. And by doing this movement, you should feel a bit of a stretch behind the shoulder blade. Like some people don't feel it, so don't worry if it's not quite there for you. But if you do it and you work it, you should feel a stretch behind the shoulder blade, which feels kind of nice. Next, we're gonna pull our arm across our body here, bringing our hips to one side and the arm across to the other. So then we have a nice stretch in the lat muscle. So we're back to full circle here. Belly up, belly down, different angles. And then we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. So same thing on the other side. I like to start with the hand a little bit higher than the shoulder and pressure your shoulder in, turn away from the wall, breathe out and work the angles. Elevate and lower with your legs. So you have good stretching in every muscle fiber in the chest. And change the angle, walk down a bit, with the fingertips. And you can spend as much time as you want in each one of those variations. So depending on the tensions that you have, you can spend more time in any particular muscle group or joint based on your needs. Going all the way down, hand goes close. You're almost uh, hip level. And we're still turning away from the wall and working the angles. And we work our way back up, slowly. At this point, it feels a bit weird because you feel like you have one shoulder and arm that's really relaxed, and the other one is still stiff, and it'll catch up soon. Oh, this feels good. But the sweet spot is really like a little bit higher than the shoulder, that hits the middle of the pec. It's really nice. And then we'll go all the way to vertical. Again, sticking the bum out. Different angles, still hitting the pec at this point. This is kind of pec and lat, pec. And then let's go to lat, so reinforce and push the shoulder away. So I'm doing this with my hand against the wall. Here. 
and angles. Reinforcing with the other hand for a little bit of an added stretch. Triceps. Yeah, stretching the triceps. Bring the hips close to the wall. And again, angles. So you're really working on uh, elongating the muscles, but it also it's also joint mobility. So you're increasing the actual mobility of the joints, especially in the case of the shoulder and the hips, which is our, is our ball joints. Uh, so now we've done this here, go back to up, and then we'll go here across the body like this. Remember, it's not about turning your body. It's about pulling your arm onto your chest. So you should feel the stretch in the back of your shoulder. Right here. Again, different angles. Should feel pretty good. And then pop the shoulder up. So you're stretching behind the shoulder blade. Sometimes a little bit challenging, but work at it. And if it's not for you, just leave it out of the routine. And then reaching across here. Belly up. Belly down. There we go. Very important to breathe in all those exercises. Constant breathing in and out. And that helps clear your mind as well. So it's kind of a form of meditation and relaxation at the same time. Next, while we're close to the wall, we're gonna take the opportunity to stretch our calves. So both hands on the wall here, and we're gonna push our heel down here and stretch our calf like so. So you keep the other leg just for uh, balance and you're really going uh, side to side. And a nice little variation here is you can uh, switch the angle of your bottom foot so that you're hitting different fibers in the calf muscle. So a very useful stretch. For the calf. On the other side, a little bit closer so you can see some details. So I'm digging my foot onto the mat here and really pressuring the hips forward and working the angles. Right here, side to side of the hip and turning the heel in different directions. Still going side to side with the hip so that we have a nice stretch in the calf muscle. Moving on, time to hit the mat uh, or any soft surface, a uh, rug or whatever that you got. Hard floor could work too as well. So we're gonna just, here, start, since we're, we haven't finished the shoulders, one last exercise is we're gonna just put the hands in the back here on the back of the palms, just like that. And we're gonna slide our hips down and that's gonna create somewhat of a stretch, a good stretch actually, in the shoulders. So going side to side, and you can scoot a little bit more forward. Now, personally, I'm not very flexible in this uh, range, but for added flexibility, you can connect your hands together and you can go further this way, or uh, you sometimes you go as far as you can go. So either on the knuckles here, and you can really slide far if you have better flexibility than me, which might be the case. Next up, moving on to the hips. So we're gonna start by opening our legs. So exercise for this, I like to start by sliding the legs apart here and going as low as you can. Don't uh, go too low, you don't wanna feel pain in this case. But what's important here is I like to rock a little bit forward and backwards, hand behind the legs here in between the legs and go to this position, back to this position here and work the flexibility, and just an angle, as you can see, so nice and wide with the legs, and dropping the hips, and retreating the hips, here. And we're going twisting. Uh, so this is really gonna hit the hip joint flexibility, or range of motion. Here, so different angles. You can go toes up. So those are your two variations and you should alternate between both. So you can go uh, feet flat on the ground like this and then work the different variations and or toes up. I should do both here and here. And again, 
working the twist. See, toes up, toes down. Then you can go all the way to one side. So toes down on one side here and turning the hips as far as they can go in this direction. And we're gonna drop as much as we can. I like to go down with breathing. So breathing out, going down. Other side, same thing. Twisting, twisting, and then breathing out as we go a little bit lower. So that's a little bit too challenging for you. You can also keep your bottom, your back knee on the ground here and just stretch this way. Now, a nice little added uh, variation here for the hamstring. Most people, if you have any back pain, that's uh, closely tied to the hamstrings being too tight. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna stand on one knee, extend one leg and bring your hips out in the opposite direction. So you're doing a reverse pelvic tilt over here and reaching towards our foot with our head and our chest. So it's really about, it doesn't take much, it's subtle, but you wanna be able to stretch in this direction, backwards. Here, for added uh, resistance, you can put the hand on the knee so it doesn't um, bend, so it's gonna make it uh, take power away from the stretch. So keep that leg straight. And lean and then you can also work the angle so you turn in a little bit and you stretch as well and you turn out a little bit and stretch as well <sighs> to really pull on that hamstring and it feels like a, a big old rubber tube it's really uh, tight but as you pull on it <sighs> with every breath it'll start becoming looser and over time you will develop more flexibility in a hamstring, which is great for uh, your techniques in the martial arts, kicking high and for weird positions on the ground, but also very important for back health. So even if you're not a martial artist, uh, you should stretch your hamstring on a regular basis for any of the sports as well for that matter. Again, other side here. So working those hamstrings. So I'm really focusing on the hamstring every fiber. So turning out, Stretching with every breath. Turning in. And the middle. There we go. So now our hamstrings are nice and loose. Now it's time to open up the legs here. So as wide as you can. Don't push it too much. You To go wider, you can just plant uh, your heels on the ground here and scoot your hips forward like this so that you have a nice wide spread with your legs. At this point, what's uh, nice to do is to uh, post on your fingertips in the back, elevate slightly and kind of pull your tailbone under you so you have a nice straight back. And from there again, you're gonna work on the angles of the stretch, <sighs> left and right and forward, keeping that slight uh, hip elevation so that our body is free to move forward. I'll go from the side so you can see because the posture is really important in this uh, situation. So nice and wide with the legs, posting here, and then I wanna, so you can see my back. So you're basically like arching your back. You're doing the opposite of bending your back, round back, you want an arch back. So this is really gonna hit the hamstrings. So left and right and forward so that we have a nice stretch in between the legs, the hamstrings and the hip joint. From here, so we've uh, got accustomed to the position. Now we wanna go reaching for one foot. You grab the outside or the top. If you're not quite there yet and your flexibility is not there, you could just grab your pant or the outside of your leg or you can wrap a towel, actually have one, <clears throat> around your foot here so you can pull yourself towards your leg. It's gonna help. Uh, so having a piece of string or a towel is very helpful. So here, reach. And now I like to go from ear to ear. So I'm gonna go one side here, so facing inside, ear to the knee. Again, same principle, breathing out. On the way until you can touch your head to your shin would be your desired goal. And then we start working our different angles. So now I go facing the legs, so chin or forehead, 
to the leg here. And then we're gonna reach with the opposite hand, ideally to the outside, but again, adjust your grip depending on your flexibility. And now we're gonna do a nice oh, twist. This is great, this is my favorite one. Anything that twists the spine feels so good. Nice stretch, and then lean again. And stretch, and lean. And then we're gonna work our way slowly to the other side. Leaning forward a bit, so working all that range of motion in the middle. Just like that. And we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So grabbing the outside of the foot, ear to knee. Start slow until you feel the stretch. That's the important thing. You don't want to overstretch. You want to feel it, make it feel good. Somewhat uncomfortable if you're not used to it, but uh, it should ultimately feel good. You shouldn't feel like kind of a stinging or stabbing sensation or like needles. That's bad. That's when you're tearing the muscles, you're going too far. So you just want to feel a nice stretch. And you know, work your way to your full range, but don't push too far. And over time, you will develop it. And then facing. Good outside. Oh, nice twists. So you're looking all the way towards the back. There we go. A little bit more stretch in front, added range, so I want to be able to reach as far as I can in front. There's two ways to do that. You can either pull yourself with the friction of your hands on the ground, or you can push in the back. Here and lean forward like this. Slight elevation in the hips in this case, I find helps a lot. And again, we're gonna work the different angles here, not just stay in one direction, but work in all directions, because that's the reality that you will find yourself in if you wanna be uh, dynamically flexible, which is important. There we go. And then bring the legs in. A uh, nice little trick, I like to kind of shake it off over here. Look at the blood flow back in, loosen up the muscles. Feels good. Next, we're gonna do butterflies. So here, bring the feet close to the hips, grabbing the toes around or the ankles, pulling the, the knees in, uh, the feet close to the hips, and then with your elbows, pushing your knees towards the ground. You can get a little bit of rocking motion here. I find it feels good. You could also kind of hover a little bit lightly by trying to keep it uh, loose. You wanna try to loosen up joint in the hips when you do so. And then we go back to pushing them down. So pushing your knees towards the ground here. I find it helps a little bit to have a round back in this case. So if your back is a little bit round, you will have a little bit more range with your knees going close to the mat. If you keep it super straight, it's a little bit more challenging. So depending on your flexibility, if you're really flexible, some people are really flexible in this direction, you might be all the way leaning forward and your knees are still touching the ground. So that's great, that's what you wanna be uh, after you stretch for a, for a while if you really wanna focus on that. But as you can see, I'm not the most flexible guy, but uh, through stretching, I'm able to stay healthy and develop uh, decent techniques. So over here, next variation, we're gonna do one leg straight and one leg bent, so it's kind of a half butterfly stretch. So here, leaning, so we're coming back to the hamstring that we did earlier. Leaning on the leg. And then a nice little variation here is to push the knee down as you stretch, and you should feel that in the lower back. Not all people feel it, so it's different body types, it depends. You should feel somewhat of a stretch in this situation. Other side, same thing. You can start with the knee variation, hold the toes, but again, anything else if you're not quite there yet. Lean away from the leg and forward. We'll stretch in the back, different angles, back and forth, and lean all the way to the leg, just like that. There we go. So now we did a lot of forward bending. At this point, I like to do the cobra stretch. So to stretch the spine in the other direction and also stretch the abs at the same time. So we're just gonna lie flat on our belly like this. I'm gonna elevate our head here, pushing with the arms and looking at the ceiling, just like that. 
And now we want to twist as well, go side to side. So you want to lean to the side and also twist at the same time. So this you should feel in the abs. And this is an exa example where you want to flex a little bit. I like to flex the bottom of the back. So flex the back backwards, to develop a little bit of muscle tension opposite what we just created. I find it helps with posture. And it feels good because you're bending your spine backwards, whereas you were bending it forward a lot previously. There we go. Next up, we're gonna work on the thighs and the glutes and the, uh, the hamstrings again a little bit. So here, sitting on one foot. So you really wanna have your bum connected to your heel here on the side. So we're sitting on that foot. Sometimes if your knee is not quite flexible, it's gonna take some work. You're gonna need to work your way there, but if you're comfortable, you can sit on the foot. And then you wanna lean backwards away from your knee like this. If you're very flexible, you can go all the way down with your back on the mat, but try to keep your knee on the mat as well. So most likely this will be enough for you. So knees on the mat, so just feel a stretch here. So again, going into it and coming back, going into it and coming back. There you go. And now, since we've stretched the uh, uh, thigh muscle, or the quads, uh, and we're in a good position to transition to the ankle. And this is when you raise your knee. So by raising your knee, you're bending your toes forward. Let's see from the side here. So raising your knee, you're bending the toes forward here. And that's gonna be great to have greater flexibility to uh, prevent ankle locks. Maybe. Here. There we go, breathing out, staying always relaxed. Now, since we're in this position, now we're going to let go of the tension here. Just get the leg on the side. And now, since this leg is bent, we're going to stretch in the opposite direction. Bring your chest to your knee. Here. Stabilizing with the hands. Nice base. And like this. We're going to bend all the way. And again, we're going to work a little bit left and right. Different angles. Walk all the way. All the way to the front. Here. And just keeping the leg bent and going as far as you can in the opposite direction. And back, far and back. And next, we're gonna go in the opposite direction in the back. So we're here, and now we're gonna walk our way here in the back, and this will feel good. It's a nice spine uh, twist, <sighs> stretching the back. So you maintain the figuration with your legs and look backwards. So good. Next, this is really important. This is gonna be for guard retention. So we're gonna, this leg was here, we're gonna extend it out over here. So about 90 degrees or slightly more. From here, we're gonna to try to bring our head, not quite to the foot, but to the inside of the foot. And this is really gonna hit the hip joint. So it's less of a muscular stretch, but more of a hip joint, um, mobility increasing exercise. So if you can bring your head close to your foot and stabilize base out with this arm, and bring your head as close to your foot as you can, this is gonna be very beneficial for your guard. You're gonna see some application of that in future videos. And we're gonna repeat the process on the other side, same thing. So here, fold the leg under, sit on your heel and get comfortable in this position. Work the uh, hip joint here, leaning backwards, stretching the thigh. There we go. Leaning, nice stretch, breathing out. Eyes closed, extra relaxation. And then lift the knee for the uh, ankle stretch. And let's stretch the other leg. So let go of tension here and bring your chest to your knee here. There we go. That feels good. All the way forward. 
forward, just like that. Different angles, different fibers, and backwards. Here, looking all the way to the back. Notice every time I breathe out, I go a little bit further into the stretch. Moving on, guard retention. Here, legs extended, 90 degrees or more. And bring the head to the inside of the foot. It's quite easy to go to this side. Going to this side is what's going to pay off in terms of guard retention. I'm going to show you the application for the other side in a moment. Since we're on guard retention, I'm gonna do the same thing from the back. So we're here, we're gonna bring our uh, knee one at a time, the other leg straight. We're gonna bring our knee all the way to our chest, here. And again, pulling it across, changing the angles. Here. Another variation, we're going to grab the foot and we're trying to pull our knee here lower than our shoulder, so as low as it can go, almost like touching the ground. Not quite, but here. So you're also working on the hip joint flexibility, and that's going to be important for guard retention. Right here. And it's nice to work the different angles as well, so bring it out. Bring it in. You could do the same thing with the leg bend as well. So towards the outside, towards the inside, here. And then with the leg bent at a 90 degree angle, bring the foot ideally behind the head. Right here. So most likely your hips are gonna come off the ground. That's, that's great. That's what you would do in a real situation. So if you can bring your foot all the way to touch Ideally, kind of your ear or the top of your head is what you're going for. There we go. Other side, same thing. Start straight. Lie your head, it's going to help you relax. Pull. Change the angle. Here, in, and out. Bring the foot up as well, a little variation. You stretch a different fiber more towards the outside of the boots. Pull the foot, different angles. Bring the knee behind the shoulder. And guard the tension. Try to get your leg off the ground and try to connect your foot to your head. Some guys are able to put them all the way behind their head. That's great if you're able to do that. Still working on it myself. But I had good improvement. When I started the stretch, I was about here. This is about as far as I could go. But over time, got pretty far. Far enough so that when the person starts passing your guard, you can bring your foot in and start bringing back the first barrier, which is the peak. And then you can do the same thing with uh, both legs at the same time. So bring the knees in here, focusing on a strength. It's not so much an ab exercise here. It's really just the flexibility of the hips. And you can do it here, both sides. Bring the feet here, so knees to the armpits. And bring both feet to the head or behind the head, ideally. And a great stretch. And now that we've done this, I like to add another little cobra here. Let's do it from another angle so you can see. So right here, cobra. So we bent a lot in, I want to arch. Instead of bend, I want to arch the back. Keeping the hips on the ground, looking up, and we're twisting. 
I'm leaning. You should feel a nice stretch into your obliques when you do that. Last stretch is going to be the spine twist, my personal favorite. So we're going to lie here. I'm going to do both sides. So I'm going to bring the foot here, grab the opposite hand and foot outside of the knee, pull your foot across here, and the opposite hand and the foot that's touching the ground will reach in the opposite direction. And at this point, you just do let gravity stretch you out. Every time you breathe out, try to relax completely. And you will notice that even though you relax, you're most likely not relaxing completely. As you really focus on the breathing and relaxing, you know, increase. The hand's gonna get a little bit closer to the ground. Feel a nice deep stretch in the spine. Push a little bit further, went through there. So good. The other side, same thing. Reach across, foot goes to the mat, other hand goes extended. And we let gravity do the work. Once we're done, take a moment just to enjoy the sensation. Just kind of lie down and down on the mat. Deep breathing. And just focus on the breathing. Try to clear your mind. Really focus on the breathing like meditation. And focus on the sensation you have in your body. The absence of tension. I'm ready for bed. So the hard part is getting up after this. So here's my method. You go one leg, turn it a little bit, bring the arm in, bring the other arm in, turn here, the legs under, post up, post up, and get up, <laughs> slowly. All right, so there you have it guys. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, sleep well. <laughs> Till next time, I'm Patrick Fulop. This is Effective Martial Arts. Thank you so much for watching and practice well. <laughs>